Have you ever wondered why we see bubbles coming up when water is boiled? That's because there is air dissolved in the water. When water is heated, air escapes out in the form of bubbles. When water is boiled, since air escapes, oxygen is also removed from the water. Water covered with oil. You see a beaker with water. A thin layer of oil is deposited on the surface of the boiled water. If the layer of oil is deposited immediately, it prevents the oxygen from air dissolving in the water. And this means that there is no or very little oxygen in the water which is covered with a thin layer of oil. What happens when water is cooled? You see a graph shown here. Y axis represented by volume and X axis represented by temperature. You see a mark there for 4 degree Celsius. When water is cooled, initially its volume decreases until the temperature reaches 4 degree Celsius. At 4 degree Celsius, the volume of water starts to increase and water expands as shown in the picture here. So when water is cooled initially the volume decreases but at 4 degree Celsius it begins to expand or increase. Let's look at an experiment to understand the concept that water expands when cooled. You see a bottle filled to the brim with water and closed with a cork and this bottle place it in the refrigerator after a day open the refrigerator you will find that the cork that closed the bottle would have popped out why do you think this happened it's because water expands when cooled and when water expanded it needed more space when it became ice, it needed more space and hence pushed the cork out. Effect of temperature on rate of evaporation. As temperature increases, rate of evaporation increases. or in other words rate of evaporation increases with temperature as temperature decreases rate of evaporation decreases how do we know this on a sunny day clothes dry faster that's because the water evaporates at a faster rate whereas on a cloudy day clothes dry slower which is because water evaporates at a slower rate and hence we know that when the temperature is high the rate of evaporation is high effects of wind on rate of evaporation you see two pictures here picture number one where there's a lot of wind picture number two there is no wind which one will dry faster of course it's the first one on a windy day clothes dry faster because water evaporates at a faster rate and on a less windy day clothes dry slower and that's because water evaporates at a slower rate on a less windy day 
Now to summarize the effect of wind on rate of evaporation. As wind increases, rate of evaporation increases. Or in other words, rate of evaporation increases with wind. As wind decreases, rate of evaporation decreases. Why we sweat more when humidity is more? You see two pictures here. F two people from different locations. Picture number one. On top of the person's head, you see very little water droplets. These water droplets represent the water content in the air around the person. Whereas from the picture two, you see that on top of the person's head, there is dense water content or there is very high level of water content in the air. So the humidity in picture one is less, the humidity in picture two is high because humidity is the amount of water content in the air around us. So in this case what happens? When the first person perspires, the water droplets from his perspiration is immediately converted into water vapor and the reason why because the water vapor is not around the air or in the air is very little and there is enough space for more water vapor to go in whereas on the second picture since there is no room for more water vapor to go in the person sweats and the water droplets do not evaporate immediately. That's why we feel as though the first person does not sweat whereas the second person is sweating profusely. But the truth is both of them sweat. For the first person, his sweat evaporates faster whereas for the second person, his sweat does not evaporate at a fast rate. This also shows that evaporation is slower if humidity is high. First, humidity is the amount of water content or water vapor in the air around us. As humidity increases, the rate of evaporation decreases. Now let's see what happens on a windy day. You see water vapor above the person's head depicted by small droplets of water. When wind blows, what would happen to the wat water vapor in the air? The water vapor in the air is blown away and so the amount of water vapor around the person is now very less and so when he sweats his sweat evaporates at a faster rate so on a windy day the rate of evaporation is faster Another factor that affects the rate of evaporation is exposed surface area. We see two pictures. Picture one, a towel is not folded and is hung for drying. This towel dries faster. That's because water is evaporating at a faster rate. Whereas the second picture, a towel is folded and dried and this towel dries slower that's because water evaporates at a slower rate in this case what is the difference between the two in picture one the amount of surface area that is exposed to the sunlight is more whereas in picture number two the amount of surface area that is exposed to the sunlight is less how does 
water in solid form which is ice turn it to liquid ice gains heat from the surrounding to change into water Condensation. What is condensation? We see a glass of ice cube there and also water vapor represented in the picture here. When water vapor in the surrounding air touches the cool surface of the glass, it condenses into water droplets and this is called condensation water vapor in the surrounding air when they touch the cool surface of the glass they condense into water droplets the same can be seen in the case of a fruit a lemon or orange which is taken from the refrigerator and put on a table after a few seconds we will observe water droplets on its surface where do these water droplets come from the principle is the same water vapor in the surrounding air goes and touches the cool surface of the orange or lemon and when it does so it condenses into water droplets What is water cycle? In this picture, you can see water represented. This represents lakes, rivers, streams, drains, etc. This water evaporates to become water vapor, which again, this water vapor moves higher in altitude. At higher altitudes, they because it is going to be cooler there, they condense into water droplets. The water droplets group together to form clouds. Clouds are nothing but water droplets grouped together. And when the amount of water droplets in these clouds become more and more, it becomes very heavy. And when it becomes very heavy, it comes back to earth in the form of rain. So it could be rain or snow depending upon the weather conditions in that particular place and this is water cycle. Ice gains heat to become water and this process is called melting. Water loses heat to become ice and this process is called freezing. Water gains heat to become water vapor or gas and this process is called evaporation. Gas or water vapor loses heat to become water and this process is called condensation. Ice gains heat to become water. Water loses heat to become ice. Water gains heat to become water vapor. Water vapor loses heat to become water. How do we lose water? How do humans, animals and plants lose water? Humans or and animals lose water in three forms one is in the form of feces exhaled air when we exhale hair there is water vapor in it and the last perspiration so animals including humans lose water through excretion in the form of feces and urine in the form of exhaled air and perspiration 
do plants lose water yes they do they lose water through tiny holes on the leaves which are called stomata plants lose water through stomata and this process is called transpiration